What's up guys, Tech Nick here, and today we're gonna to be talking about and covering all aspects of the two new Vivo mid-range champions, that being the V25 and V25 Pro, which are the successors to the start of the year's great lineup, that being the V23 and V23 Pro, which had mad front-facing flashes for its cameras, its dual camera setups, they still have great selfie cameras, but they've kind of put more of their energy into the rest of the phone. So I'm definitely keen to get into that, and I'm keen to get into what both of these guys have in store for you, starting with the contents of the boxes, which even include a pair of wired earbuds each, a silicon case, charging cable, and charge and break all in the box. This is Technic, and this is my unboxing and full review of the Vivo V25 and V25 Pro. The Vivo V25 and V25 Pro start at $350 and $450 respectively, which in my opinion is more than reasonable in terms of what they actually have to offer. There are a few different color variants when it comes to each device. We have aquamarine blue sunrise gold and diamond black on the V25 and surfing blue and starlight black on the V25 Pro. I have the blue versions of both of them and both of them are color changing devices. They use the back fluorite AG glass and that with a mixture of UV light or sunlight for a couple of seconds and it changes the color of the back plates which looks absolutely fantastic. I actually created my own Technic templates over here. I thought it looks quite snazzy. Moving on from the pleasing aesthetics of both of these devices and how they kind of have a chameleon-like aesthetic. They both pack in relatively large batteries at 4,500 milliamps on the V25 and 4,830 milliamps on the V25 Pro. The Vivo V25 has 44 watt charging and comes bundled with a 44 watt brick in the box, while the V25 Pro steps up the game with 66 watt charging and includes an 80 watt brick in the box. They both have relatively new six nanometer run chipset, that being the Dimensity 900 on the V25 and Dimensity 1300 on the V25 Pro. And that bundles in a Mali G68 integrated graphics on the V25 and Mali G77 MC9 on the V25 Pro. Both devices are kitted with LPDDR4 X RAM and get this, flagship material like UFS 3.1 storage. Another flagship material like thing is that the V25 Pro has a bionic vapor chamber cooling system. This is unfortunately lacking on the vanilla V25 and both devices do come paired alongside 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.2 and NFC. Both phones have glass fronts. They both have fluorite anti-glare glass backs that of course change color and unfortunately plastic frames wrapping around. The V25 is thinner and lighter than the V25 Pro at 7.79 millimeters as opposed to 8.62 millimeters on the Pro model and 186 grams as opposed to 190 grams on the V25 Pro. When it comes to cameras, they are very, very similar. Starting with ultra wide, we have an eight megapixel on both devices here with 120 degrees field of view. When it comes to the main cameras, we're kitted with a 64 megapixel sensor on each device, though they are different sensors. And lastly, and pretty much least, both devices are kitted with two megapixel macro sensors. Unfortunately, no telephoto cameras this time around. The ultra wide sensor though the same looks slightly better on the V25 Pro 64 megapixel main, once again better on the Pro model. 16 megapixel bin looks great on both. Two times digital we can do on both of course as well as five times digital. Definitely a lot more clear on the V25 Pro because it does have that larger sensor. 10 times is the max zoom over here. And we can also shoot two megapixel macro shots I guess the color accuracy is actually better on the regular V25. When it comes to portrait, things look pretty crisp and clear with almost perfect edge detection on both devices. And we can record bokeh video on both devices, though the V25 is capped at 720p 30fps, the V25 Pro can go all the way up to 1080p 24fps. When it comes to regular video recording, both of them can shoot 1080p at 60fps, though both of them are wonky. The V25 Pro does look a tad bit smoother than the vanilla V25, and they can both do 4K video 
video recording, though the V25 is capped at 30 FPS, while the V25 Pro can hit a max of 4K 60 FPS. When it comes to ultra wide, however, both of them are capped at 1080p and 30 FPS, though they do look okay. They really do blow out the sky in terms of lighting pretty badly. Recording ultra wide at night is pretty much a no-go. Both of them revert down to 25 FPS when recording at 1080p, and you can barely see anything when you're shooting main video over here using 4K 60 on the Pro and 4K 30 on the V25. Things look okay, quite shaky on the V25 Pro. Of course, once we bring that down to 30 FPS, matching the V25 on the Pro over here, both 4K 30, it's smooth on both of them, nice and bright on both. 1080p 60 on both of them using the main sense over here, it's pretty dim because of the high frame rates, but dropping them down, we do have super night video on the V25 Pro, and the difference is huge compared to the regular V25, which lacks this feature. Moving on to taking photos at night, eight megapixel ultra wide night mode off on both, does not look the best night mode on, looks worse on the Pro model over here. Night mode off with the regular 16 megapixel bin looks fantastic, night mode on even better. I do have to say the V25 Pro definitely takes the upper hand in terms of night photography as well. It just looks a lot more realistic when compared to the regular V25. Color accuracy is on point for the Pro model over here. If you want the better back camera setup, you definitely want the main sensor that's on the V25 Pro. And moving on to taking a portrait shot of me over here, night mode off, night mode on. It doesn't make a huge difference, but you can actually use a night mode feature with the portrait mode feature enabled on the Pro model, which is something that you cannot do on the vanilla model. So when it comes to taking photos and videos with the back cameras on both of these devices, while they have very similar specifications on paper, they are quite different. The macro shots look more natural on the vanilla V25. The ultra wide looks similar on both, but color accuracy is better on the Pro model. And the Pro model's main sensor is by far better than that of the vanilla V25, especially when you're zooming in, it retains most of the detail. On the right side of the devices, we have power buttons above that, non-split volume rockers. And at the bottom, we do have dual SIM 5G, dual 5G standby tray, Unfortunately, no expandable storage over here, though both of them are kitted with water resistant seals, even though they lack IP certifications. We have a USB 2.0 Type-C port at the bottom, as well as a single down firing speaker for both devices. And fortunately, those huge earpieces at the top are not utilized as second speakers. When it comes to selfies, things are slightly more different as opposed to the back cameras. The V25 this time around takes the upper hand with a 50 megapixel snapper, as opposed to the 32 two megapixel camera on the V25 Pro. The V25 can shoot at native 50 megapixel and the V25 Pro at native 32 megapixels. But while the V25 can bin down to 12.5 megapixels, the V25 Pro has no pixel binning option here. They both look absolutely fantastic and portrait mode ensures that both of them have pretty much perfect edge detection. What's up guys, Technic here recording a 720 30 FPS video on the Vivo V25 and a 1080p 24 FPS video on the Vivo V25 Pro. Reason being that they're different is because at the moment we're shooting bokeh video on both devices and this is the max resolution and FPS that you could do when shooting bokeh. So bokeh video might be different on these devices but one thing that is the same when it comes to selfie video recording is the fact that they can both shoot super smooth, super silky 1080p 60 FPS video. But something that the vanilla V25 has over its bigger brother, the V25 Pro, is the fact that the vanilla one with a better selfie camera can shoot 4K 30 FPS video, whereas the V25 Pro is limited to just 1080p. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when recording using the selfie cams on the brand new V25 and V25 Pro. So selfie videos at night don't necessarily look the best, though we do have 4K 30 on the V25 as opposed to 1080p 30 on the V25 Pro. When we switch both of them to 1080p 60, it's extremely dark because of the high frame rates, of course, but we can drop them both down to 30, 24 FPS. Once again, we have super night video on the V25 Pro, something that's lacking on the V25, even though it has the better selfie camera. Night mode off in terms of photos over here, looks slightly better on the V25, night mode on looks better on the Pro. Flat 
flash off looks better on the V25 flash on. I would say looks more natural on the Pro over here. So things are a bit different when it comes to selfie photos and videos on both of these devices. The V25 actually has the better selfie camera this time around, even though it is not the Pro model. And the V25 Pro, while it still takes fantastic photos, caps video at 1080p 60fps, while the regular V25 can go all the way up to 4K 30fps. Powering on both devices, we get to the always, always on displays and they look fairly nice and bright. And we do have under display fingerprint sensors. They are both optical and many mid-range phones these days are sticking to physical fingerprint sensors. It's nice to see that Vivo is still keeping it under the screen. We also have 2D face unlock, which uses the selfie cams on both phones and it does the job quite well. And when it comes to screens, things are fairly similar to the V23 series despite not having massive notches. We have a 6.44 inch AMOLED display on the V25 and a slightly larger 6.5 inch AMOLED display on the V25 Pro. They both have full HD resolution, though the V25 has a slightly higher pixel density. And while both devices have ditched the huge notches from earlier on this year in their predecessors models, the V25 still has a water drop notch and the V25 Pro now gets upgraded to a hole punch notch design. Once again, the vanilla model has a flat screen while the the Pro model has a curved display. Both the V25 and V25 Pro support HDR10 plus content, not to mention they also have support for Netflix HD and HDR. But one of the biggest differences here is that the screen brightness can reach a max of 1300 nits on the V25 Pro, leaving the V25's brightness in the dust. Another big difference here is the fact that the V25 has a 90 hertz refresh rate, same as its predecessor. The V25 Pro one ups the V23 Pro, that being its predecessor, from 90 hertz to 120 hertz in terms of refresh rates. This is not an LTPO display, so it cannot refresh from say one or 10 to 120 hertz, but it still has super fluid 120 hertz scrolling and 300 hertz touch sampling rate for that matter. Both of them are super smooth and fluid when running FunTouch OS 12 run on Android 12 that is. They both nice and seamless with Google Discover on the left hand side, Google Assistant from the bottom left corner. They have simplistic app drawers as well as widgets that you can tweak and customize on your home screen, not to mention a great notification shade. They are both kitted with LPDDR4X RAM and can be furthered by an additional eight gigs of RAM thanks to RAM extension. As mentioned earlier, both of these devices have more than decent processors and both of them are more than efficient thanks to them both running on six nanometer process node technology. The V25 has a Dimensity 900 chipset as opposed to the Dimensity 1300 chipset we see on the V25 Pro. The 1300 is for sure better, well, only slightly better than its predecessor, the V23 Pro's Dimensity 1200 chipset, though the V23 actually had a better chipset than the V25, that being a Dimensity 920, as opposed to this one's Dimensity 900. And when paired with the Ultra Game Mode option enabled within settings, and the boost feature enabled within that, we got an Antutu score of 463,146 on the V25, which is actually lower than its predecessor's score, and we got 709,094 points on the V25 Pro, which is only slightly better than the V23 Pro. When it comes to Geekbench version 5, the V25 got a single core score of 712, which is actually better than the V25 Pro single core score of 662 both of which were beat by the vanilla version of the V23 that we saw earlier on this year, and the V23 Pro did slightly better than the V25 Pro. The V25 got a multi-core score of 2,003 points, which is slightly less than its predecessor's score, while the V25 Pro got a multi-core score of 2,419, once again, lower than its predecessor's score. And when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, the V25 got an average FPS of 13.1, which is slightly less than the V23's 13.8 average, but the V25 Pro did surprisingly well with a 4,508 points and average FPS of 27, which is slightly better than the average 26.8 FPS that we saw on its predecessor. And moving on to gaming, since the benchmarks are actually more than decent if you ask me at this price point, Enabling the boost option in the ultra game mode settings. There's also a couple other features that you can tweak around with there. And moving on to our first game, that being Genshin Impact. Of course, the game is capped at 60 FPS 
on both devices, on all devices that is. So even if we have a high refresh rate, we're not gonna be able to see anything more than 60. We've got an average of 30 FPS on the V25 and an average of 41 on the V25 Pro. That average on the V25 Pro is similar to flagship level chipsets, such as the Snapdragon HN1 chipset. Moving on to Bullet Force over here, Ultra Graphics Max FPS. There is no frames per second cap on Bullet Force, meaning that we should be able to utilize the full refresh rate that being 90 on the V25 and 120 on the V25 Pro. But the V25 Pro is capping it at 60 with an average of 59, while the vanilla V25 is reaching 89 frames per second on average, which is fantastic. When it comes to Real Racing 3, same thing can be said. While the V25 Pro is once again capping at 60 with an average of 59, the V25, the vanilla one with the lesser chipset, is getting an average of 88 FPS. Very weird, and I really hope that is fixed with a future software update in terms of the frames per second, reaching the max refresh rate on the V25. Pro. But what about speakers? Let's go ahead and test out the V25's speaker and then go ahead and test out the V25 Pro. So that pretty much wraps things up in terms of all aspects covered in this review of the brand new V25 and V25 Pro. Very similar phones, but very different in things that make a difference to which phone you should buy. It's not so much which one is cheaper because the V25 is cheaper, but which one draws you in the most based on its use case scenario. If you are a avid selfie taker, if you're a vlogger, the selfie camera on the vanilla V25 might be more suited for your needs, but if you like to take more photos using the rear cameras, then there's no doubt the V25 Pro is the way to go. The V25 Pro also has the bigger battery and faster charging, though the vanilla V25, it is cheaper and it still has a more than decent sized battery and more than fast charging, faster than some of the other flagships around that being from the likes of Samsung and Apple in terms of fast charging capabilities, which is great. Of course, no wireless charging on both. They're not IP certified. They don't have expandable storage. These are not flagship devices, but for the price that you're paying, they are more than decent. Actually, I would even go as far as to say extremely premium mid-range smartphones. There is no aluminum frame, however, but there is a glass sandwich. And the biggest highlights of both of them is that they can both change color. They're more than efficient and smash in terms of performance, despite a few issues here and there, they are still fantastic devices and could very well be some of the best mid-range devices that 2022 has to offer. Let me know what you guys think of both of these devices in the comment section down below, as well as which one you would pick if you had to choose one of them. Forget about the price for a second, which one would you go for in terms of their individual features and why you would pick that one? This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.